everybody. Hello. Welcome to the Facebook Live unboxing event for the George R. R. Martin box. Uh, these are available for pre-order at grrmbox.com. But today I have with me Jason Concepcion, staff writer for The Ringer, who will be Hello. walking us through all the cool contents inside. Very excited. Um, this is a moment that I have dreamed of for a long time. And while we wait for everyone to log in and join us today, we thought we'd just do some warm-up questions, get sure. everyone well acquainted. So, Jason, we wanted to know, how did you guys get involved in the Song of Ice and Fire series? Well, I was a fan. Um, I'm a fantasy book novel fan, and so started reading these in the early 2000s, and it just snowballed. Next thing you know, HBO picks it up, and it's a worldwide sensation. Um, I, you know, I just love the characters and the intricate plotting, the constant betrayals, the incessant death and lack of any hope whatsoever. It just really speaks to me on a human level. How did you discover it? Was, did someone recommend oh, it to man, you? Yeah, you know, I think, um, you know, by Storm of Swords, it was like they were on the bestseller list, New York Times bestsellers, and you're like, whoa, I've never heard of this. Um, but it was a fantasy book, so I was like, I'll pick it up. And it was just great. I mean, especially the first one, you know, they, they just move really quickly. Um, one through three moves exceptionally quickly. Uh, four is really good as well. I like large sections of five. I just like the books a lot. You know, I got sucked into them like many people have across the world. <laughs> Which one did you read the fastest? Exactly? Ooh, uh, that's a good question. Uh, probably Game of Thrones and then I, um, Probably Game of Thrones. Storm of Swords, I read, um, it's the f I read it twice back to back, like right after I finished it, but I read most of it like through my fingers because so many, spoiler alert, so many people die in it um, <laughs> in horrible ways. But I would say Game of Thrones, yeah. All right, so walk us through how you kind of turned it into almost a career. Ugh. Well, as you know, it's like totally by accident. I can't say that I planned any of this out. It was, um, I was writing, articles for Grantland, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Grantland. And um, it just so happened that I had read this stuff, you know. So I pitched this as um, a column because, you know, a one hour show and an adaption, there's only so many things that you can put in there, although, but you can feel the detail like underneath the surface just by osmosis coming through the screen. But there's a lot of unanswered questions, you know, like relationships between characters, you just can't go to it in an hour. Um, so I was like, hey, what if we, what if I answered questions about the relationships between characters, things that have gone on in the world historically? Because it, like, this is a world, as you know, that has a detailed history that goes back, you know, eight or nine thousand years. So, you know, people are going to have questions. <laughs> uh, and it just so happened that the show is a huge hit um, and it became, became popular. I enjoy being employed. It's good. Um, <laughs> I'm thankful for it. Great. And uh, what did you think of the last season of the show? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It's nice to um, just see a lot of things paid off, like that have been seeded throughout um, both the shows and the books. Um, and also, I think book readers can take uh, some solace in the fact that it's so different. You know, the the, the narratives have have diverged so much that it's really like two different tellings of the same story. So I, you know, like I don't, some things are going to be spoiled, but I don't think, the core experience of reading the books isn't changed. You know, when I like reread them, the depth of history is just startling. Mm -hmm. Really What's amazing. What's your favorite like divergence of plots? Like? <sighs> oh man, I, you know, I liked uh, that we got to see, um, the Battle of Hardhome, mm -hmm. which is the pre you know the previous season, but the season season five, um, that's really something that happened off sc off screen in the books. Um, you just kind of get this like harried letter, dead things in the water, blah 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 blah, um, and then to turn that into like a whole episode of just you know like the um, the the es escape from Dunkirk, but with zombies, you know, it was really just like one of the greatest hours of television I think that's ever happened. Like the one scene where the zombie kids are just kind of staring at <sighs> you. 
so it was so sad. And but you know, like there's there's also that moment where um, where the wildling woman like is like, I love you, and I'll be on the boat real soon. I promise. Where you're just like, ah, you're gonna <laughs> die. You died, lady. Sorry. It's, yeah. You know, we're gonna sail away forever in happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Commenting on how big the box. The box. The box is big. <laughs> in fact, like this is like uh, you know like several casks of wine. Um, it's large. It's large. And let's talk about like weight. I would. It's not, actually not that heavy. Like let's say. Hoist it on your shoulders. Sure. This is like I would say eight and a half pounds, maybe nine, mm -hmm. sub ten, certainly heavier than five. I don't know about kilograms for anyone not in the United States. Um, but yeah, it's big. Should we open it? Let's go. Ready? Let's rock and roll. Take it away, Jason. Uh, let's take a, take a minute to gander at the wonderful scorching. This is this helps age the contents. Okay, first thing, should we do the miniatures? Now this isn't a spoiler. Um, this is by Dark Sword Miniatures. It's Jon Snow and Daenerys together in one package. Um, now, I said, I was talking to my friends at Penguin Random House, and I said, this is like kind of a spoiler, no? And they were like, no, this is, they just package them together because it's more ecologically friendly. So don't infer anything from this, um, but they're wonderfully wrought. I don't, like, I'll hold it up so you guys can see it. Um, Personally, I don't have like I don't have the patience to paint these like with the single horsehair uh, brush that it takes. But uh, for all you like miniature fans out there and Warhammer 40k people, this is pretty cool. Um, and now, what else? Now this is awesome. This is. Um, a map of King's Landing on, this is a silk? Oh. Two feet by three feet. Three feet. Um, I wish like you could see some of the detail on this, but I don't know how to hold it up. Can I, if I do this? This was like, you can just geek out on this one because like here's, here's Chitayas for you, uh, for you book readers. Like here's, let's see. Here's Shay's Mance, where Tyrion kept his secret girlfriend away from the clutches of uh, Cersei and the various people who'd probably want to kill her and get information from her. Um, here is the Sept of Baelor, no longer in existence uh, for you show watchers, um, blowed up. And you could see like how far, how far it was when Cersei was like watching the smoke rise from the, the ruins there. This is just like super cool. Um, let's see, where, what else? Here's the uh, Guild Hall of the, of the Alchemists, which kind of like, that's kind of like a clue to where Dragonfire might be, might be hidden, considering it's like so close. I would think like King's Landing PD, if they did, if they did a most likely sites for Dragonfire to be hidden, they'd go, well, maybe the Great Sept of Baylor, considering it's like three blocks away. Um, Street of Steel, former place where Gendry, currently rowing across the ocean, was uh, employed. Let's see what else. And here is where the Mud Gate, here is where the Battle of the Blackwater was pretty much decided. This is like really cool. Like I'm gonna have to convince my wife to let me hang this. Probably hang this like in my closet, I guess. This is rad. Let's see what else. Uh, ooh, shirt. Now this is from HBO. Yep. Game of Thrones shirt showing the narrow sea between two continents, and then we have the various sigils of houses. Like, Sight the Tully's made it in there. It's like kind of 
not really a, a world power anymore, but I'm like, I'm happy for them that they made, that they made it in there. This is cool. Now this set of Christmas lights, seasonal, you can use this for whatever. This isn't necessarily, um, necessarily tied to any one religion of the seven or, or anything like that. Uh, let's see, we've got the various important sigils. The Tullys didn't make the cut on this one, which I think is, I'm a fan of the Tullys, but like, let's be fair. They're not really doing much right now. Um, Starks, Baratheons, uh, Lannisters, all the Lannisters kind of on their knees as well. Um, Targaryens, this is cool. Um, I would put this up in my hallway. Oh, this is like, these are rad. Uh, the Dead Man's coin set. So this is like dead characters and their personally minted coins, the coins from their like family mint or what have you. Um, let's see, I don't know if you can get close on these. These are really, really cool. And you know, kind of like in that, some of them are in like a semi-Roman style. This one's like almost like Byzantine. Eddard Starks is like very, looks very much like something you'd see in like late 600 Byzantium. So it's Eddard Stark, um, the Faceless Man coin, Valar Morghulis, uh, Rob Stark's Half Dragon. I'm surprised Rob Stark had time to make coins, aren't you? Like this, you know, I guess that's like one of the things, it's like as soon as somebody declares you king, you've just got to, economic policy, I need coinage now. But it's like, you know, he had more pressing issues. I'm kind of surprised at that. Um, Oberon, Oberyn Martell, half dragon. Oberyn, he's another guy, like why does he have his own coinage? But I'm not, I'm not arguing with it, it's really cool. Joffrey Baratheon, dragon, makes sense. These are gonna be collector's items. <laughs> uh, I mean, in Westeros. Let's see, Tywin Lannister, half dragon. Uh, I mean, this is like the guy had all the gold, so I would imagine he would obviously put his own face on them. And Walder Frey Penny, now dead in the show, not in the books, but let's not question it too much. Um, Walder Frey, funny that he would only mint a penny. And then there is this. The Aegon the Conqueror silver stag. This is actual silver? Yep. That's crazy. This, people will steal this from you then. Like just actually to melt down. Um, yeah. Aegon the first Targaryen and you can see there his two sister wives which I'm glad that they made it in there, very important to his victory. These are cool. These are another thing that it's like, where, is, where can I convince my wife to let me have these displayed prominently? Yo, I'm an expert in this. The Living Language, <laughs> Dothraki Living Language by uh, David J. Peterson. I did a multi-week um, column at Grantland, Rest in Peace, about me learning Dothraki. I, I remember very little of it. To be fair, um, Arak means sword. Uh, Dothraki means those who ride. Uh, I don't remember much else, but it's really amazing like how much it is an actual language like with grammar and stuff. And I think like if, if you're going to pull the I'm an expert card at your various Game of Thrones events or at like a Comic Con for instance, it's very, very little that can be done to match you if you start speaking in Dothraki and people with other people. That's like, but also be prepared to like learn a real language because it's like a legitimately real language with grammar and everything. Um, ooh, one of the most fateful documents in Westerosi history. This is the will of Robert Baratheon. This is the blood from his guts right here. Uh, and I shall read it. 
Ned, grab the quill. Uh, this is the will and word of Robert of House Baratheon, the first of his name, King of the Andals, and the Roinar and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, Protector of the Realm. In the books, he just goes, ah, fill in the titles. You, you got it. Uh, I do hereby command Eddard of House Stark, titles, 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 Protector of the Realm, upon my death, to rule in my stead until my, right here, heir does come of age. This is, now, Robert said, until my son Joffrey, not his son. Uh, and, you know, Ned was like, man, should I tell him right now? He's, like, going to die, and I feel like this will hurt him even more. It's, it's a big mistake, dude. You should have told him. That was a huge mistake, and that's why Ned is dead. Um, but this is cool. Of course, the other, the other famous will would be, um, would be Rob's will. Where that is, no one knows. Heading north, we would assume. Ooh. Now, I am not a card guy. Uh, well, I play Hearthstone on my phone. So it's very similar, a Game of Thrones card game. You can attack on three fronts, as I understand it. Um, wait, let's take a look at these, because these actually. Now, if you have any kind of like experience with card games, you understand that like it's all about building specialized decks. Um, wait, hold on, this can't be in here. That's Star Wars. What the hell is going on? Um, and the cool thing about this is it comes with the ultra rare Daenerys Targaryen card. Now, with a character level of seven, I guess, does that translate to like mana in Hearthstone? I don't know, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I have been told that these only will come with, with the box. So there's like 3,000, that's it. If you have one of these, you would be like, you'd likely be the only person playing who would have one. That's pretty good. And the art is really great too, like, I don't know if you could. And all the, all the artwork is really that good. Here's Jamie. Looking very Fabio-like in his golden armor. Ooh, Tyrion. A different Tyrion than we're used to. More uh, clean cut. Good hairstyle. Let's see. Ooh, Tywin. Yeah, these are the artwork is really great. Pointing angrily because Jamie just lost a battle or something. Uh, let's see what else. Ooh, the Burn Men. You might remember them from season one of Game of Thrones in the first book. Uh, tribesmen of the Hills. They helped Tyrion out of, a, uh, out of a tight squeeze. And he gave them like swords and stuff. Yeah, these are cool. And we're not done. Ooh! Every maester needs one of these. The Maester's Journal. Feels like really leathery. Uh, and there we have like the seasons moving in their kind of random ways, which have yet to be explained, but which I explained as like it's just magic. No one really knows why. And here's the various chains of metal. And the ravens. And then finally the 20th anniversary edition of Game of Thrones. Pretty cool. It's like, now this is like the display copy. So like the real one is going to be like way better, but it's like, I, I'm a fan of maps, so it's very cool that there are maps. Skagos, for those in the know. Yeah, these are cool. Any questions? Oh, well, George, do you have anything to say? These also, the books are going to be autographed by George? 200 in the ultra limited edition. 200 of these books will be autographed. Bound in leather. Well, let's save George's hand 
200 is like that's pretty rare and like he can probably knock that out in like an hour and a half um, Good job, old buddy. George R. Martin here exclusively. All right. Let's get to questions. So, as a thank you for drinking, coming out oh. today to walk us through all the awesome things it's fine, in, my the, computer. <laughs> in the ultra, ultra limited of the box, we wanted to present to you an official Valyrian steel cat's paw blade. Very Ooh. sharp, very real. Now, uh, this is great. Um, this, of course, is the blade the assassin carried when he was trying to snuff out Bran in first season and first book, Game of Thrones. Ended up cutting Cat's hand and then uh, Summer killed the dude. Uh, a fateful blade, and one of the few Valerian steel uh, weapons in the world, although we don't really know where it is right now, in the fictional world of the books. Uh, it was passed over, Ed, Ned had it, he used it to kind of track um, Littlefinger, and then no one knows what happened to it. These are the only things that can kill White Walkers, folks. Very important. This would be priceless. I'm very proud to own this um, and to be able to defend my home from White Walkers now. Thank you very much. And we'll be, stay tuned next week as we announce more Valerian Steel items and our Ooh. sweepstakes. Can you tell me what they are? I can't yet. Ah! Uh, <laughs> but we'll announce it on Monday of next week. That's, a, that's very exciting. Also, like, I have to carry this home now, and this is, like, I think the law in New York is you can't have a blade longer than an inch and a half, as long as, like, not a box cutter. Uh, so, NYPD, this is just, this is only, this is ceremonial. This is not, we're not doing muggings out here. Maybe, though. Well, it's very fun. Questions, yeah, then. questions? Oh, and one um, reader asked what's in the special edition box. That's the $75 box. That comes with the t-shirt, a special edition of the book with the full color insert, the living language Zephraki, um, and the iron coin of the faceless man. Ooh. Well, let's show them so the, the iron the coin. the center coin well. from yep. the dead man set. Which, like, let's be fair. You could do the most with the, uh, with the dead man, with that, the faceless man coin. You can actually go somewhere with that. Um, these are just kind of like, hey, look, I have these dudes' coins. They're very rad, though. All right. Anyone, no more questions? Any more questions, guys, while we're still live? <laughs> yeah. There's also a limited edition version that comes with the printed box. Mm. And can see more about that on grmbox.com, 3,000 of those. The box is like very sturdy and black lined velvet. It's actually 18 pounds. I looked it up while you were talking. 18 pounds? <laughs> I guess I'm just like much more <laughs> swole than I thought. Uh, wow. Yeah, these, I mean like, you know, it's it definitely a statement piece. This is a huge box. You could bury like a medium-sized dog in this.